been a choice specs variant focusing on basically burst damage, including using a the move hyper beam which normally is not seen as a very very good option for most pokemon but terrapagos actually loves that thing yeah it's a very interesting team setup terrapagos definitely a more a little bit of an interesting <laughs> pick there it looks like it's going to be holding the choice specs as well, so it's going to be locked in to whatever it chooses to bring out here. Mm -hmm. But looking over at Kyle's team, it's going to be the ones we've seen before. It's going to be the Ice Rider with the Pelipper and all the usual flavorings there. But this time we're seeing a Landorus Incarnate be committed, and we're also seeing a Rillaboom being added to the mix. Yeah, some old classics from like the past regulation where we used to see Landorus Incarnate pretty consistently on what felt like one of every three teams but uh same thing with rillaboom but kind of fell off a little bit with this new regulation but of course they still have a place and i'm looking forward to seeing what kyle can pull off here it is going to be also very interesting as we hop into the match in just a couple of moments here it looks like it actually looks like we're hopping right in right here right now but according to our sheet here um Kyle has a lot of ways to deal with this Tarapa Ghost, so Connor's really going to have to try and dance around um, and try and find their shots. Yeah, there we are. Already leading it with the Calyrex, the Chi Yu. A very interesting pick on the side of Connor. And now we're going to see the Intimidate come out, lower the attack, but the fake out pressure is going to be very strong from the Rillaboom. He has. A lot of options here. This Chiyu already threatening the Calyrex. You know, this overheat is nothing to sneer at. And now, fake out pressure as well from the Rillaboom. Really putting a lot of threat on this Calyrex. I wouldn't even be surprised. Yep, there's the Protect. And now we're going to have to see what he does with his Incineroar. Does he try for a fake out? What is the play that Kyle has in store here? You know, we'll have to see if his Incineroar is still completely open for attack, but with the Calyrex being on the field, that is where most of the focus was going to go. So now the Incineroar with the parting shot going to lower any sort of prospects of potential here from Connor's Chiyu. And now the, the free swap here for Kyle. Since that Incineroar removed last, it doesn't have to worry about switching in and immediately getting blasted by something. So it is going to be the Pelipper coming up, going to stop any sort of um, major fire damage here for the for Kyle's uh, Calyrex ice yeah there has been an absolute swing right there that protect that defensive play from kyle was absolutely impeccable there the rain set up from pelipper everything is going his way this chiu now gonna have to be forced to swap out now with rain coming up here has some choices to make. Does he switch to the Amoongus? It looks like that's what he's hovering. And now the U-turn, he wants to get the double switch out. This is a bad position to be in. He needs the pivot. Yeah, Chiyu wasn't going to get much done in that situation there. It would have just eaten a solid shot there from that Pelipper, more than likely. So Amoongus is going to come out to play, ready to tank this. And actually, the Pelipper not going for any offense at all. Going to opt a Tailwind here. Try and give with that normally very, very slow Calyrex a little bit of a speed boost. And getting that Glacial Wow! Boost, that is some major damage to both members on Connor's side. Rillaboom's going to fall, and Amoongus is down to its last, like, 10%. An absolutely brilliant play from Kyle once again, and now, what do you switch into here? The Amoongus, double knockout would have even been a better position here, but the fact this Amoongus is still up, it's going to make this next few turns very difficult. Pelipper's being hovered here, going to try and get something tanky out here, but I think he wanted that Chiyu for the ability, uh, that ability to lower the special defense. Yeah, you want, you would, optimally you want Terrapagos and Chiyu both out on the field at the same time so that your Terrapagos could hit harder, but even still, the uh, Pelipper threatening the wide guard is going to just shut down the main force of offense there for Terrapagos, which of course would be a Terrid up Terra Starfall. We'll have to see if that comes out momentarily here. Swap is possible. That Amoongus is next to no HP, and Chiyu is just kind of, like, 
Bit of a fish out of water to say the least because it is so squishy. Granted, it does have that focus sash, so it cannot be one shot, but sitting out here in the rain like this is not going to do it any value. Yeah, it's like a fish, a fire fish in water is really exactly. the case that's happening here. And unfortunately, Connor just has absolutely nothing oh. to deal with the rain. He has nothing to clear, no Torkoal to set up the drought, no Coridon here to set up that sun, try and clear this rain. Incineroar coming back out, getting intimidated off, but not going to affect this special attackers too much, but another parting shot would absolutely put him in a bad position. And now, it looks like Kyle is looking to go for a finishing blow, going for the Terra on the Calyrex. This is going to be Terra Water once again, even further resisting that fire threat of Chiyu. Okay, so Chiyu's just having a bad time at this point here. There's absolutely nothing it can really do. Protecting just to make sure it doesn't get dunked on. But unfortunately, therefore, Amoongus is actually going to uh, protect as well. So not going to fall just yet. So this one going to go to the wayside. Which way it's going to get protected away. But yeah, now, with it just being grassy terrain, the Incineroar on the side of Kyle could absolutely look to fake out one of these Pokemon here, go into the Chiyu, and just any sort of damage that would have happened, just denying it anyway. You know, Amoongus isn't necessarily going to... isn't necessarily known for its DPS threat. So... It would be absolutely devastating if he lost it, though, considering that is also the only way that he can heal that Terrapagos. Yeah, he can, He needs this Amoongus going forward, but this Swapo, he doesn't want to take such a disastrous hit on that Terrapagos just yet. He wants a little bit of a safer Swapo, but I don't think he's going to get a better chance than right now. You want to try and get it before that Chilling Nay goes off once again. You don't want the double boost on that Calyrex. Now he's made some choices here. Gonna swap out the Amoongus. And I think Kyle is just gonna hammer this one home. And this is the one problem from playing Terrapagos is that you feel like you almost have to save your uh, terrestrialization for it in order to get the buffed up and um, the double hitting Terra Starfall. So using your Terra on anything else just kind of feels bad for the most part. But there are certain scenarios where it does actually make sense, as we are going to see the Terra Ghost onto the Chiyu, with I'm guessing the intention to be to dodge a fake out right here, which sure enough is going to end up being the case. But just to keep this fish alive a little bit longer, and of course, the Glacial Lance is going to hit like a truck, but at least Terrapagos does have that Terra Shell to make it another wow. effective hit. But even still, that is about half of your HP gone. Yeah, water in the rain, this overheat is, isn't going to do too Look much. That. Yeah, that is going to be a really rough position to be in the Terrapagos. Yeah, I don't think it has even has enough DPS to make up for that. Like that's even including the Beads of Ruin with the uh, special defense drop, just firing off any sort of fire attack in that rain is just so detrimental. And now it's going to be up to this Terrapagos, really, to find some way to punch through this Calyrex Ice. And I honestly do not think there is an option here. You're basically going to be stuck using Terra Starfall as its single target variant, which still, granted, does do a lot of damage. Or you're really hyper beaming. We'll have to see. Now, Terrapagos being parting shot, oh, there's gonna be no damage coming out from the side of Connor. Now, Kyle, it feels like I think he's very comfortable here. So now, I think we're just gonna see set up from here on out. I mean, honestly, he's in the driver's seat. There's nothing that can threaten really any of his Pokemon here. That is going to be the Glacial Lance once again coming on out. The fish there for, or Chiyu rather, is going to block this. But there is no more Terra Shell for Terrapagos, and it just gets cleaned up, smoked off the field. And that is the problem with a special attack focused Terrapagos. It is surprisingly squishy for being a turtle. This match is going to be up to Chiyu and Amoongus, and I don't see them firing through all three of them. The Tailwind's gone, the Drizzle's gone. <laughs> There's something you could try and do here, but against two water types, this Chiyu really not going to be dealing out much damage at all, especially after the parting shot. It's so much more. The overheat even lowered the special attack even further. This is just a matter of time at this point. Yeah, absolutely here. They're going to fire off the Snarl, but it's not like really either of these are doing major 
Or I guess Pelipper can still do some pretty decent special attack damage, don't get me wrong, but Cinder are gonna come on right back in here. We still don't even know what Pokemon number four is on the side of Kyle. It's just been such a very, very slow but methodical matchup to basically just abusing the fact that there was nothing on Connor's side of the field that could really, really threaten him. And now it's going to be up to the Amoogus to try to put him to sleep, but you're not going to be able to move first. Of course, that was a Tailwind. Wow. Still in the favor of Kyle, which will be one more Glacial Lance to clean up game number one. Yeah, beautiful game number one for Kyle, only revealing three of the cards in his hand there, keeping one secret. So now Connor doesn't even have the advantage of information going into the next game. It is going to be a very tough fight back. And I think the main thing that might be missing from Connor's team is a way to clear that rain. He doesn't have any drought setter. He doesn't have any move that could even clear the rain. So mm. you don't want to bring Chi Yu into the next game unless there's, you have some way to do that. There's literally one option that he does have in order to cleanse out the rain and it is to terrestrialize Terrapagos because if Terrapagos does have the extra bone effect, uh, uh, excuse me, bonus effect where it basically, it terrestrializes, heals a tiny, tiny little bit, gets rid of the weather, gets rid of the terrain. But it's a one-time use. You can, it's not like an every time you switch in. So if I'm the, the player using the Pelipper, okay, retreat, come on back in again later. And it's, you're dealing with it all over again. It's good for a one-turn burst if you have it lined up that way but that game was just not quite necessarily lining up that way. The Chi you had to Terra to get past the fake out from that Incineroar on Kyle's side, but even then just could not get the follow-up play to really get a good punch in. Yeah, just could not get that one in the end. But now we're going into the game to, I think we're gonna see a big switch up on the side of Connor. I think we might see maybe mm. a little bit more of an aggressive play with Terra Pogos. Maybe start leading Terra Pogos, get it out early, try and get as much use as you can before the setup gets going for Kyle. I know you really want to be in a position to try and shut down that Calyrex, but it has Protect, it has a lot, it can stall. Meanwhile, it has the supporter mon on the side debuffing you with Incineroar parting shot, getting a rain set up with Pelipper. There's just too much you can do with that other slot. I mean, like taking a look at the team sheets here, at least looking at how game one went, you were able to get a little bit of information here if you're uh, Connor in this instance. So we know that Kyle is completely willing to use that Pelipper for Tailwind, which means that from a situation where you're probably normally gonna be faster than Calyrex Ice, it was able to strike first. So you need your own speed control and he does have a Tornadus on the team. Does he bring it this time by to maybe give him a little bit of extra punch? We absolutely are. Tornadus is gonna lead the charge here alongside Rillaboom. Only scary thing with this Tornadus though is you might wanna tear it into this Calyrex is you're super weak to ice being a flying dive both are weak to ice on the field right now so we might see a u-turn come out with this real boom after the fake out i don't know how i how much i like this entry here i mean it's it's a scary spot because it could very well be a scenario like you're mentioning where you do have prankster at least so you're guaranteed to whip out one status move in, and in this instance, he would have the choice between the Taunt and the Tailwind. Gonna be the Tailwind more than likely in this scenario. But yeah, if this if it is a Glacial Lance that does come out of Calyrex, you are toast. But you then get a free switch into whatever you want. It could very well be the uh, setup that Connor needs to bring in Terrapagos and immediately go for a shot. And actually, it's gonna be a Taunt wow. onto the Calyrex Ice. Incineroar flinched. If this was the Trick Room setup, no, it's a Glacial Lance. That's gonna hit so hard. Turn one, and it gets the double knockout. A disastrous start, and a beautiful play by Kyle. There is a little bit of a benefit, though, with using the taunts. Like, granted, the Rillaboom failing is also gonna be really painful. It's gonna be up to the final two Pokemon here. I'm going to take a guess that it's going to be the Terrapagos alongside one other. Let's take a look. It's a Chiyu. Okay, we're going for burst damage. So now, at least since you taunted, you know that Calyrex cannot protect. It has to eat whatever either of these Pokemon are firing at it. But will this be strong enough to take down this Calyrex? Tire shift comes out, and I have a feeling we're gonna see the Terra Terrestrialization also there. Going for the Terra Star Storm with the overheat. There's so much threatening this Calyrex. We might even see a emergency swap out. 
And here we go, sure enough, we are going to see some terrestrializations there. I think he was hovering the Chiyu. I'm not sure which one he necessarily confirmed on here. Let's see, it is going to be on the Terrapagos, and I believe it will be the Starfall. So we're going on the, excuse me, on the negative side, you did get rid of your grassy terrains. That little leftovers healing effect is going to be gone. And if Pelipper wants to come on in later on in the game, that's going to be gone. But here comes the Heat Wave. Calyrex down to a quarter. That is going to be absolutely devastating. Terra Star Storm. Let's make it rain stars and finish off this horse once and for all. There it is. Streaking across the sky. They go in. They bring Incineroar down to one last piece of HP. Now, using Parting Shot, which one does he land on? Ooh, that's gotta hurt on the Terrapaga, Terrapagos. It's gotta hurt at that now, point. Here's the trouble, though. Is the Pelipper in the back? We know that this Terrapagos is choice specs. He's locked himself into Terra Star, uh, Starfall, which is a spread move. You just wide guard. Sure enough, Pelipper is here to play. This Terrapagos is going to be absolutely useless, essentially, until this Pelipper is dealt with, and then... Oh, even worse here for Cotter. It's actually the Landorus Incarnate who is just going to absolutely demolish this Chiyu. But granted, you still have to deal with the uh, Focus Sashes. Sure enough, Pelipper, you know what to do. Get the Wide Guard out. Has the Wide Guard out. The Snarl is yeah, also going to block the Snarl. There is absolutely nothing Connor can do to turn this one around. Sure, you can overcrit, but. It's just Chiyu against the world, and with the Sandshire going out, it's going to take down the Chiyu to 1 HP. Sash coming into effect, but I don't even know what you could do if you're Connor, because Kyle is just making these amazing plays. I think it's checkmate at this point here. There is nothing that Chiyu has to deal with this. You have your overheat, fire move, and rain. That's not going to do anything. You have heat wave. It's going to get wide guarded. Snarl. It's going to get wide guarded. There's absolutely nothing he can do to one shot this bird right here, right now. And then as soon as Chiyu goes down, it's going to be nothing that they could do. And actually, it's going to be the overheat into the Landorus. So this Chiyu is going to fall. It's going to just be nothing but Terra Star Falls. It is going to be blocked over and over again. We are going to say goodbye here to Chiyu for this time by, and it's only a matter of time before you see this Terrapagos fall. Yeah, there's the Star Storm blocked out once again, but now it's going to go over. The Double Protect going to come through. Now, or the wide guard going to come through. Checkmate. That's going to be it. Kyle just doing an absolute master class of use of his team. And Connor gave it his best shot, but he just couldn't get the right setup he needed. Yeah, so when kind of introducing some of the students around here to VGC for the first time and like talking about how Pelipper is good, they looked at me kind of funny, right? Just like, Pelipper, why? Playing with <laughs> legendaries and whatnot. Why is this the toilet bird. Why is Pelipper <laughs> like being used in competitive? That right there is exactly why we use it. We have the speed control with the tailwinds and then you have the wide guard. And as you can see, there was absolutely no good option for Connor in that scenario. Terrapagos was basically dead weight, hoping that Chiyu could somehow one shot a Pelipper with a fire move in rain. That doesn't <laughs> yeah. happen. And one thing is the drizzle as well, just That's absolutely you, negating all those fire types. Chi Yu, Incineroar, a lot of the strong picks in this meta to counter out those ice types are these fire types. And you just can't, they're absolutely useless in those rain. Like, even when it was relatively effective at your max effectiveness with the Beads of Ruin effect active, that was still doing maybe a half at most. So it's just an absolute game changer, that drizzle along with everything else Pelper has going for. It's just an absolutely strong pick. Mm -hmm. And I, that make, gets me thinking. We see this Pelipper so much on so many teams, even teams without Ice Rider. But on that Ice Rider team, that fire defensive coverage through Drizzle is so strong. So mm. what do you even bring to counteract that? A steel type maybe to try and crack the crack the ice of Ice Rider? But it's like there's not many good choices here. Like the fail safe isn't necessarily the Pokemon, but your move set, which is kind of like a bit of a trade off. You know what your optimal move set is for damage. Like say for a lot of Terrapagoses here that we're seeing, it's um, you have the specs with the Star Storm, Hyper Beam, and the, the Earth Power. Earth Power is not going to hit a Pelipper, period. Wide Guard's going to stop Terra Star Storm. 
unless you just don't use your terrestrialization, which is kind of putting you at a disadvantage in its own right. So you have the hyper beam, but that's going to then take you out for a turn. So like these Terrapagos players are kind of stuck in like a sniper kind of play style where they have to get such a specific position to actually get their damage off. But if you don't get it, you get trapped. Yeah, it is such a tough position to be in, but that's what Pokemon's all about. Just crafting the perfect plan and trying to execute it to the best of your ability, and Kyle executed it perfectly. Absolutely. Fantastically played there. That was an absolute um, Pelipper 101 there shown from Kyle, but just fantastic play all around. Connor is definitely going to be right back into this still. Of course, that's the beauty of Swiss rounds. You're definitely not out of this yet. We'll see if we can see him again later on. But before we do end up throwing this to a break while we await for Swiss round three, um, in the chat, um, King Lefchuk actually says, it's either going to be a Trapagos or a Zamazenta <laughs> going to win the whole tournament. So that actually um, wanted me to bring up the question. Chat, absolutely, you can get involved in this as well. But which restricted Pokemon do you think will lead the charge for today's winner? Uh, I think it will be the Zamazenta today. That's what I believe The day of Zamazenta? I think it's the day of Zamazenta, if I'm good, giving you my real honest opinion. But what I want to see, I don't even think there's a single one out there. Mm -hmm. I want to see something wild. I want to see something no <laughs> one's run. I want to see a Lugia, a Ho-Oh, Zekurum something, something wild that we usually don't see. Even a Groudon would be an interesting pick. But... Throw in the mix-up, absolutely. <laughs> and, and fair enough. And we... <laughs> Daniel from the back room says, let's bring Karidon. <laughs> yeah, Karidon would be Karidon. a good pick as well, but with all that being said, I think we're going to throw it to a group and see what restricted legendaries we have after the break. <laughs> 